When I was around 10 or 12, my great grandpa told me this story right before he passed. His grandpa told him the story of when a babysitter named Carla was babysitting these two kids. And they were a little bit younger kids, like maybe six or seven, and they go to bed real early. So she got called one night to go babysit them at their house. So she went over to their house, introduced herself, introduced them to the parents, and then the parents left and she was all alone. So what she wanted to do was just go put them to bed, go watch TV. So that's exactly what she did. It was around seven o'clock. She went upstairs, tucked them in, said goodnight, went back downstairs. So whenever she plopped down on the couch and turned on the TV, about 10 minutes later, she heard a phone ring in the kitchen. She goes, that's odd, maybe it's the parents telling me some extra information. But she walks over there, her feet clanking on the tile floor, answers the phone, hello? This old man with a scrappy voice answers. Hello, I'm in your country. She goes, who is this? No answer. With a puzzled look on her face, she hung up the phone. She was walking back to the couch, very puzzled. She just sits down, thinks nothing about it. Starts watching TV. About 10 minutes later, around 7.20, she heard another phone ring. Okay, she kind of forgot about that other phone ring. So she walks back into the kitchen, answers the phone. Hello? I'm in your state. Answers the scrappy voice, old man. She's kind of a little scared and a little creeped out at the same time. She doesn't know what to think. She doesn't know to be scared. Th she thinks it's just a prank call. So she hangs up and goes sits back down. She doesn't turn back on the TV because she's a little scared. She's just wondering what's going to happen. Who's going to call next? Why are these people picking me to prank call? So then, about five minutes later, around 7.20, the phone rings again. She walks over to it. She's wondering to pick it up or not, but what if it could be the parents calling about something about their kids? So she answers it. I'm in your county. She hung up the phone immediately. She wonders if she should call the cops, but it might just be a prank call. Probably nothing's gonna happen. So she's, she's a little scared right now. So she goes back, she doesn't sit back on the couch. She's just kind of pacing back and forth, wondering what she should do, what's gonna happen next. And she's waiting for the phone. It rings again about one minute later. I'm a block away from your house. She's kind of freaking out at this point. She doesn't know what's gonna happen is, she, is that guy gonna come into her house? Is what's gonna happen? Is, am I gonna be in danger? Are the kids gonna be in danger? Am I gonna be killed? Like, what's gonna happen? So she hung up the phone and she just immediately called 911. I've been frantic panic in her voice. I, I've been getting these prank calls. It's a threat. This guy has been getting closer and closer. The cops are just like, they, they think it's a prank call, cause, so they don't pay no, no attention. They just say, okay, we'll be, have a good night, madam, and then hung, hang up the phone. And then after that, she hears another phone call. She lets it ring a couple, couple times. She answers it. I'm in your house. It's dead silent for about five seconds. Then she hears, the kids upstairs screaming. She hears doors slamming, the baby crying, the seven-year-old crying. She runs upstairs as fast as she can. She opens the door. She runs into the room, opens the door as quick as she can. She sees the man that seems, he has a bald spot in the top of his head with a little bit of hair right here on the sides of his head. He just turns to her with his scrappy voice, with a blood-covered axe in his hand, very sharp, blood everywhere, stained in the carpet, splattered all over the walls. It's just disgusting. 
and he says, I'm in your group.